Everything good? Yeah. Okay. So starting in three, two, one, go. Yay. Long ago, so this is Cornerstone, Bandit. also known as Totally Not Wind Waker. Um, this was the home if you don't know Tiger. this game, then he was just that's fine. Nobody else probably does either. Uh, this was kickstarted a couple years back, and it's about as good of a, a game hero. as you would expect from a game that barely gets kickstarted. So right off the bat, we're just gonna skip the tutorial here by abusing the wonderful save system of this game. If you roll and save and quit, you just teleport to a different spot. I'll explain that in more detail later, but that's the tutorial then, basically. And now we're gonna do some magic, so there's this sheep here, and this wall here is magic. As you will see, if I pull this off correctly. Whee. Ah, didn't quite make it up there. That's kind of bad, but we'll deal with it. So, we're just gonna use this wall, which is also magic. Oh, that was really high. So we're just gonna grab this key here and fall down here. Do some more magic, because this wall is also magic. So as you can see, the physics of this game are kind of busted. But sadly, we can't really do this in many other places, because it requires kind of a specific combination of items and walls. But we can skip a large part of this first area by just doing that and flying all over the place. So the goal of this first island is you need to get some plans to make a raft so that you can sail away from this horrible place. And the plans are in this really long dungeon, but we can kind of just open the secret exit through a wall, so... Here's the plans. Now we can kind of just jump in this fire and death warp our way out of here. And now we're done with the first island of the game. So the way this game is structured, I guess, the story of this game is that you're a young viking boy on this viking island and all the vikings have gone over to this area over here called the Vale and they did never return so obviously you have to go and rescue them. And you do that by first getting the raft here and then you gain access to these three smaller islands around the, uh, around the main island. And then you need to gather some items here and you gain access to an even bigger boat and then you can go to these big islands over here and then you get some items there and you can go to the final area pretty simple right so once we load into this island over here we're obviously just gonna jump out of our boat and get eaten by a shark because this shark is going to magically make us travel to the shore using death as the choice of travel. And this island we're actually going to do kind of the intended way. Repair this thing and go up and stuff. No really big sk skips here yet, but the rest of the game is pretty broken. And if I fail any of these jumps here, it's partly because I'm bad, and partly because this game controls really poorly. I don't know how it's possible for a game developer to simultaneously make the game feel like you're sliding on ice and stuck in mud, but somehow they managed to do it in this game. So we're gonna use the key that we grabbed at the beginning here. And here we get speed boots, which obviously, from the name, you can already see that they're pretty good for a speedrun. And they basically just increase your movement speed. Um, managing speed boots is pretty important in this speedrun, but 
I won't have them up the entire time because they take a lot of materials to make and if I run out of materials at any point then it's really bad. So pick up the toolbox here which is why we came to this island in the first place and then we're gonna roll and quit out and it just puts us outside. And then the way... there's fast travel in this game but unless you get the map which is an item that takes way too long to get you need to be on a raft in order to actually do quick travel so I'm going to be crafting a lot of these boats. Oh. I accidentally fell in the water here which destroys my speed boots but that's completely fine. It just loses a tiny bit of time. And we're off to the second of these small islands. So the way quitting out of the game works is that basically the game tries to save your position where you quit out, but if you're standing on a movable object or if you're standing on the raft or something or if you're in the middle of a roll animation, then it just doesn't really know where to save you, so it puts you like at a default position of the map, which usually is at the shore or at the entrance to the dungeon or whatever, so... That's obviously really useful in multiple places and... For example, here again, when we load into here, we're just going to quit out and automatically warp to shore. And here, this guy, if you talk to him, he takes away all your items, so... We just go past him and you're supposed to like do a quest here where you <laughs> repair these broken tunnels and this guy lets you in his house but you can kind of just go through the window, it's fine. And then you can talk to this guy and he will forcibly eject you from his house. You could also just jump back out of the window but it's kind of risky so I don't want to do it right now. And so, this place is actually a giant dungeon. As you can see, when I look up, there's like four levels and a lot of side rooms and stuff. Oh. And there's a, like a barrier blocking this doorway, which you're supposed to go all the way up to the top of this place and destroy a crystal, and that destroys the barrier. But if we can get one of these enemies to shoot the door while it's closed, then for some reason, it just destroys the barrier. We really have no idea why that works. But it does, so you can just skip this entire place. And here's an epic boss fight. Epic boss fight finished. You can kind of just go around and they don't even notice you. So now we have the ship plans, which is why we came here, and we can just kind of stand in this fire and make our way out of here. Oh. The crafting system in this game is very finicky and weird. Like there, I was standing a bit too far on the ground, so I couldn't make this raft. Okay, so now we're off to the final of the three small islands. So I was kind of lying when I said that you need to go to all of these three big islands on the sides before getting to the end. That's what the game wants you to do, but the thing you get in this place allows you access to the final area, and then the other two big islands are just like puzzle solutions, which 
if you memorize the puzzles, then you can just like go through without getting the solutions, so we don't actually need to go there. And as far as these sailing sections, there's a bunch of random stuff that can spawn, uh, like that crate over there. It just gives you one of all resources, which is pretty useless. But the thing that we want are, there are these green barrels that give you a speed boost when you go over them. So those are ideal. And if you get like random wreckage, then that just slows you down because you have to go around. Okay, so this area has a pretty cool skip. We're just going to grab the sword here and then we're going to grab this pot or urn or whatever you want to call it. Bring it over here. So we have to rescue this guy which is, or who is past this gate. You're supposed to do this really long like dungeon crawl and everything to get over there, but we can kind of just do this. That's a very inconsistent trick, but thankfully I got it first try. And we can kind of just go past everything and skip this entire place, which normally would take like a ridiculously long time. And now we rescued this guy and we can finally get our actual boat instead of having to sail around on these little raft things. Okay, so talking to this guy gives us the uh, the big boat, and also we get a recipe for an item known as the Windsurfer, and it's a really broken item, as you will see in a while. So now we're off to the, uh, I guess, second part of the game. So, going here, the, uh, the big boat is much faster than the raft, and these green barrels, as you can see, give me quite a speed boost. So, if you're going for, like, a world record or whatever, then you obviously want, like, a lot of these green barrels, and they're completely random, so it can be kind of annoying when you're playing really well, and then the game just decides to not give you any good luck. But... This game is not super competitive or anything, so it's not a huge deal. So, this island we're going to right now is the longest and hardest part of the game. Um, there's two parts to it. There's like an outside part and then a dungeon inside. One of these elevator I'm just gonna craft like speed boots, a weapon, stuff like that. So, this outside section here is... It's like a pretty cool level design area, but we're not gonna do what the game wants us to do, so... You're supposed to, like, light a torch and bring it all the way through here, and, like, light fires along your way, and... There's like a wind that blows that blows out your torch. Also, you can kind of just roll through that spider web. Normally, you're supposed to like burn it or whatever. So, instead of doing the way you're supposed to, we're just gonna use our good new buddy, the wind surfer. And one of the things that the wind surfer allows you to do is if you push it next to a wall. You can kind of just jump up along the wall infinitely. So we just get past this like small elevator thing. A big comeback or combat section rather. 
Nice. We won the fight. And again, our... Ooh. That didn't work out. Our good buddy, the Windsurfer, is going to get us through here. So this is a super scary forest. Um, make sure you don't go to the dark areas. Make sure you stay on the path or bad things will happen. A little puzzle here. Some spooky scary skeletons as well. Okay, so here... I'm going to take a bit of time and just make a safety save because this place is... There are a couple things that can happen that really cost a lot of time, so... I'm just going to be safe because this is a marathon. So, opening this first door as normal and then... Going through the next door, we're going to use our good buddy, the windsurfer, by angling ourselves just right and building the windsurfer through this door and hopefully entering it through the door and you just go through. Going through here, nothing too special. Coming up there are some crushers which are on random cycles, so I have to be kind of careful here. Even though it looks slow to just stop here. Oh, I actually got really lucky. Got a good cycle. Okay. I'm gonna grab this thing and hopefully the game saves my position here. It can randomly just not save my position, which is really bad, but it worked this time, so... I need to get some materials here and quitting out and reloading resets this crate over here, so I'm just gonna kind of grind a bit of materials and make another safety save here. Now we're gonna do a probably the hardest skip in the game. Oh. Using our good old buddy the windsurfer. So, pushing it over to this wall. This time we're gonna use it to clip out of bounds and hopefully make our way over here. That's actually a really precise timing, so thankfully I got it. Yeah, very exciting. Thank you, thank you. And I have to wait for these crushers because sometimes they just decide to crush you. They're on like a random pattern where sometimes they wait for a long time and sometimes they come instantly. And now it's time for another very epic boss fight. Hope you're excited for this. This is like the only cutscene in the game you can't skip for whatever reason. So, you have to destroy these crystals and then the boss, like, becomes vulnerable, but we're just gonna make her shoot them for us. And then, epic boss fight action. Reminder, this game was advertised on Kickstarter as heavily inspired by Dark Souls, so hope you enjoy this very Dark Souls-like combat. So she's gonna go invincible again, so... Oh. Thanks, Sticky Keys. This might still work? Okay. So yeah, it turns out, like, if you just spam attack, then 
That's the perfect timing for us to unlocking this boss. And very exciting. And we're done. So now there's a bunch of story stuff that we need to do. Talk to this guy and then get out and go talk to another NPC that we totally skipped earlier, but the game still wants us to go talk to her. I got an annoying glitch here where I'm stuck in a pushing in a pushing animation, so cost me a bit of time, but not too bad of a deal. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. So there's actually three copies of this NPC since we skipped her earlier, uh, but we need to talk to this specific, I guess, part of her. So now she cast a spell on us or something and we can go to the final area of the game. Oh. So if you're wondering why someone would speedrun a game like this that nobody knows about, um, it's actually me and a bunch of other speedrunners, we occasionally do this thing where we find a game that doesn't have like a speedrun route yet and we look at the game and basically split it into two teams and both teams route the game by themselves and then we compare the results and see who did better and usually the games end up being really bad because like if nobody speedrun a game then there's usually a reason and usually the game ends up being bad but sometimes you end up with games that are surprisingly interesting like this game has a bunch of neat physics tricks and stuff so if you want to see some of the other games we've done then searching run invalid on youtube is a good idea nice getting wreckage right before entering the load area so this is the final area of the game and as I said earlier, there are a bunch of puzzles here that you're supposed to get the solution to earlier. Oh nice, I actually got a like a speed boost barrel in the cutscene. That's pretty sweet. So there's a huge maze that you're supposed to go through here, but you can kind of just go around it by doing a glitch here. Which... Again, this is something that, if I fail it, it's going to cost a lot of time, so I'm just going to make a safe to save, because why not? As I said earlier, it feels like you're sliding on ice sometimes. Oh god. Let's try this again. Tyrant, please. Stay still for a moment, will you? Okay. So, if you pause by pressing escape, then you can actually open the crafting menu while falling. And you can kind of just make a raft through this wall, and now you're out of bounds, so... It was kind of an interesting thing when we were like figuring out what the fastest way to get through this game was, because we knew that you could just go through the maze by memorizing where to go, and I spent like an hour like mapping out the entire thing and like coming up with the fastest path to get through, and then realized that you can just go all the way around it and not bother. And even though the big ship is much faster than this small one, going through the maze is so slow because you need to turn and turn and go backwards and forwards and sideways that this just ends up being faster, so... This is the last sailing section of the game. Uh, 
I guess we can appreciate this very well-designed raft that we're sailing on. So, first off, how does this thing even work? Like, there's no engine, there's no foot paddles, there's no anything to power this thing. I guess it's magic. And then, the second thing is, why would you put the uh, spinning thing in front of you so that it spews all the water all over you? Hmm, weird design. Yeah, after this we just have the final boss and then we're done with the game, so... Gonna be quite a bit of underestimate. The final boss is another very epic boss fight, by the way, so hope you're excited for this. So, the Mason's there and you're supposed to, like, open a door there by putting in a password or something. There's a long, empty hallway with nothing in it, other than a couple NPCs you can talk to. And this huge black box over here is the loading zone for the final area, so we can just go there instead. Just grabbing a couple materials here to be safe and making speed boots, making a hang glider. And now it's time for the epic final boss fight. So the boss is just. Oh. I don't want to get knocked, by the, knocked down by those rocks, so. Take it a bit safe. The final boss is just forming right now. He's like a big rock golem thing. And obviously the way we're gonna beat him is by just running past him and not even caring. I have to wait for this wind to stop blowing, but there's this nice little corner here and our good old friend, the Windsurfer, is going to lead us to victory. By just kind of going here. And that's the final boss fight. And here's the uh, rescuing dad, which is the objective and time. So... I guess since I'm like 8 minutes under estimate, uh, I wanna show some stuff off in the uh, credits, if that's okay. Just takes like 2 minutes. There's this like final cutscene here, but it doesn't take too long. And also, since this is... The category I'm running is called Any% percent No Credit Skip. I'll explain why that's a thing. In a bit. Okay. So, this is the credits, yay. So, as per tradition with this game, we have to get eaten by this land shark here. And... Then we become the windsurfer. Oh. Yeah, so as you can see, this game is very well made. And so, you can see here in the credits, there's this doorway over here. And what happens when you go in this doorway? Oh, if I can get there, I'll just walk over there, it's fine. So what happens when you enter this doorway is, the game begins kind of a new game plus mode. Um, you can just go back to the beginning. And... This is not supposed to happen. <laughs> I I don't even know. Okay, yeah. Whatever. So what's supposed to happen is that you go in the doorway and it starts a new game plus mode and... Now it's just a black screen, whatever. So it starts a new game plus mode and... Okay, now I'm where I'm supposed to be. And it puts you right here. Um, if you remember, the game started here. This is the tutorial that we completely skipped. 
So what the any percent run for this is, which is just any percent means beating the game as fast as possible or reaching the credits as fast as possible. So you go back here and if you actually enter that black area up there, then you get transported straight from the tutorial to the credits. So, for example, you can get the recipe for a box and then craft like 20 boxes and just climb your way up there and that finishes the game. So obviously that's kind of boring and uh, doing a longer run like this is more exciting. So yeah, that's it. Thanks.